with the singing of our theme song, Back to the Blessed Old Bible, we introduce to you another Ray of Truth broadcast. This broadcast service originates in the radio studios of the Church of God in Hagerstown, Maryland, United States of America. This is Alvin A. Craig inviting you to stay with us, trusting that the Lord will be able to make our broadcast a blessing to you today. The scriptures tell us, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So to be without Jesus Christ is to be abiding in death. And of course we speak of spiritual death. For sin brings death, and sin brings separation from God. So you need Jesus Christ in your heart and in your life to have fellowship with God, to have life, and to have the prospect or hope of life eternal. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll bless our precious congregation today as we endeavor to present to them thy gospel. We pray that a program will be accompanied by the Holy Spirit, and you'll be able to use it 
to bless hearts, to enlighten souls, and to accomplish good. We want this broadcast service to be an honor and a glory to you and a blessing to souls. Remember our congregation. Remember their needs, physical or spiritual, for we know that you are a present help in every time of need. And you've told us to cast all of our care upon you, for you care for us. So bless our precious congregation and meet their needs, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As a child, I foolishly turned God away, not knowing the heartache a sinner must face. But God, in His goodness, has led. broadcast is an international broadcast, and I realize that there are those listening in other lands, but on today's broadcast, I would like to speak especially to our people here in the United States. The title of our thoughts is, Sin is a Reproach. Our text of scripture is Proverbs fourteen thirty four. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. What is sin? Well, in part, is sin is lawlessness. Sin is missing the mark. And sin is disobedience to the Word of God, the law of Christ. And the word reproach means, in part, shame and disgrace. And we're told in the Scriptures that fools make a mock at sin. Looking at some of our nation's problems, I would mention, first of all, 
the high rate of divorce and its effect on the children. Many, many times when a man and a woman divorce, the children in the home are the ones who suffer the most. When God ordained marriage, and he did ordain marriage, in fact, he performed the first wedding ceremony when he brought Eve to Adam and gave her to him as his wife and gave Adam to her as her husband. God ordained that marriage be until separated by death. But we have such a plague of it in our nation today, and it is indeed bringing heartache and sadness not only to those who break up their homes, but to the children that are so strongly affected by the break up of the home. Again, it is children many times that suffer more than the father and the mother do. But all suffer because whenever you do contrary to the word of God and to the will of God, there is a definite cost connected with it. Again, God ordained marriage, and he ordained that husbands and wives love one another and become one flesh, and that they, their children, have a happy Christian home. That's God's ordination. That's God's will. But Satan hates everything that is good and godly, and he does everything he can to get people to disobey the commands of and the will of Almighty God. The Another thing in connection with this is the great increase of couples living together, not married. God never ordained such manner of living. God ordained that a man leave his father and mother, and forsake his father and mother, and cleave unto his wife, and they should no longer be two, but that they should be one flesh. And so whenever a couple, a man and a woman, start living together without marriage, they are living contrary to the will of God. And that is what the Bible calls fornication. And fornication, along with adultery, is sin. Another thing that we are suffering today is juvenile delinquency. And many times, maybe we should say adult delinquency rather than juvenile delinquency, for there is a great failure on the part of parents to bring their children up in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord, as the Bible says that they should. We have younger and younger criminals in our nation today, and I'm not talking about petty thieves many times, but there are major crimes that are being committed by younger and younger people. And so we have a real delinquency problem on the part of parents and on the part of the children as well. Another scourge of sin that is in our nation today, is the molestation of children and incense, along with drugs. Isn't it a terrible thing that a father would molest his own children, or some good friend, supposedly, or a neighbor that would molest the children? It is indeed a sinful thing, and it is indeed a reproach to any people And these children are going to suffer, many of them, all the rest of their life because of this sin that is committed against them. And I would also say in regard to drugs, legalizing drugs will not solve the problem. It will just make the problem worse. Many times people become so addicted to drugs, they take overdose of this and overdose of that, and in their own lives. Also, drunkenness. Now, I realize 
that this is a legal thing as far as alcoholic beverages, but just because it is a legal thing as far as the laws of our nation is concerned, it does not mean that it is proper and right in the sight of God. The Word of God speaks out strongly against drunkenness. When you look at the works of the flesh, as Paul listed them in the book of Galatians, you'll find out that one of those works of the flesh is drunkenness. And Paul goes on to say that they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. There are many preachers, many religious organizations, many churches today who condone drunkenness. Oh, yes, they would tell you to do it in moderation, but whenever you take that first drink, you don't know what you will become an alcoholic. Years ago, we were told that there were over 10 million alcoholics in our country, and many of them are women. An alcoholic is one who is so bound by alcohol, he's no longer able to carry on a normal, natural life. Many of them are not able to hold jobs, not able to provide for themselves. Heavy drinkers might be able to do so for a while, but I say whenever you take that first drink, you don't know what you might become an alcoholic. And this is indeed a reproach. It is a curse in our nation. Another thing is crime among what is called white-collar workers. Well, crime is a crime, and sin is sin, whether it's a white-collar worker or whether it's a a, a man out there on the construction job. Sin is sin, and crime is wrong, whether it be a white-collar worker or not. But we have been hearing in the last several months, and the last few years for that matter, of some of these CEOs and those of lesser positions being greedy, and they are pulling all kinds of tricks, as it were, to try to get money for themselves. Selfishness. And that's another thing that leads to destruction. Selfishness puts per, uh, the person ahead of everything else. And selfishness is indeed sin. So crime, whether it be among the supposed so-called col- white-collar workers, or whether it be the ordinary citizen. Crime is wrong, and that is what's filling our prisons today to overflowing one kind of a crime or another. Another thing that's helping to fill our prisons and breaking up homes and wrecking lives is murder. And murder is also increasing among younger people today. And suicides. That's murder, you know. You're not killing someone else. You're killing yourself. And thou shalt not kill applies to killing yourself, uh, not killing yourself as much as it is not killing someone else. But that's another sinful curse on our nation today. Murder, suicide, how heartrending it is, as we have heard in recent months of how maybe a father kills his children and then kills himself. Yes, it's in our local newspaper here in Hagerstown, right along with other nations or other countries, other cities and other societies. Crimes by the preachers and the priests are also being made and revealed today. Crime by preachers and priests, I say, and One of the outstanding crimes among preachers and priests today is the molesting of children. And it is just as sinful and ungodly and reproachful on a preacher, and maybe even more so, and also the priests. Because they are expected to live an exemplary life and not be one of those who contributes to the sinful ways of of our nation, and bringing reproach upon our people and our nation. Now, churches that are supporting homosexual lifestyles, abortions, 
and sin you must religion is also a reproach to our nation and to our people. That is not what the Word of God teaches. Now, whenever God created Adam, or formed Adam, and then created Eve to be his helpmeet, he made her a woman, and he brought her to Adam, and as I said earlier, he performed the first wedding ceremony. And he said to Adam and to Eve, Be fruitful and multiply. Now, there's no two men and there's no two women that can obey that command of Almighty God. Only a man and a woman, after they are, are married, that can fulfill God's command to be fruitful and multiply. And it's a shame and a disgrace in our nation that churches are supporting the homosexual lifestyle and abortions and sin you must religion. Righteousness exalteth a nation, and sin is indeed a reproach to any people. And sin is breaking the law of Almighty God. It is indeed lawlessness, and it is missing the mark. Now, some government officials, I say some government officials and social workers and so forth, are alarmed over the conditions that are existing in our nation today. And some of the governments are trying to throw money to solve the problem, which will never solve it. But some of their programs are contributing to the things that I have just mentioned Whenever the social workers and the school boards and those kind of provide prophylactics to those school students, they are not teaching holiness. They are not teaching righteousness. They are teaching sin. And they are encouraging our young people to sin. Now, try to explain to the social workers and government officials, try to explain to them the real answer to these problems, and see how far you get. I say again, dollars will not solve these problems. Jeremiah, or the Lord said through Jeremiah 17 and 9, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now, you cannot educate sin out of the heart. No, you cannot educate sin out of the heart. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. And out of the heart are the issues of life. Making certain drugs illegal rather than criminal will only add to the problem, as I said earlier. So try to give our officials and our social workers what the true answer to these problems are and see how far you get. But nevertheless, there is an answer, and that answer is Jesus Christ. Mere religion will not do the job. As I just mentioned, there are various religions that are contributing to the problem, and they are not helping to solve the problem. They are adding to the problem. So mere religion will not do. The prophet said God would take out the heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. And that's the answer. Turning away from sin, turning away from wickedness, turning away from ungodliness, surrendering your heart and your life to God is the answer to our individual problems, to our society, and to our nation. Righteousness exalted a nation. And righteousness is doing what is right. If you will take time to read the 28th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, you will find in the first 14 verses how God promised to bless the Old Testament nation of Israel. And we read in the 14th verse, And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods. And then beginning with verse 15, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken 
unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And this chapter has 68 verses in it. And from verse 15 on through verse 68, God tells the Old Testament nation of Israel how he would curse them, what he would do to them if they turned away from his commandments. Now, I realize the United States is not Israel, as some people would try to claim that it's one of the tribes. It is not. But nevertheless, God will not put his approval upon sin in the United States any more than he put his approval upon sin in the ancient nation of Israel. America has turned away from God, and America has its own gods. Yes, I've said numbers of times, and I'll say again on this broadcast, anything that you put ahead of God, that is your God. And America has many gods. The God of fashion, the God of gold, the God of uh, of pride, the God of material things, dollar, whatever you want to mention that you put ahead of God, that is your God. And so, God has given us His Word to live by. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my pathway. Psalms 119, 105. Be ye doers of the Word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. James 1 and 22. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Awake to righteousness and sin not. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. God's laws are immutable. If you obey them, they will work for you. If you disobey them, they will work against you. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll bless these thoughts to our precious congregation today. We thank you for the privilege of sharing the gospel with them, and we trust that the Holy Spirit has conveyed these truths to hearts. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If our broadcast is a blessing to you, it would be an encouragement to us to know. And we invite you to write us our mailing address, The Way of Truth Broadcast, Post Office Box 88, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21741, USA. And our email address is truth at fred.net, truth at fred.net. Our webpage address is www.wayoftruth.org, www.wayoftruth.org. We invite you to join us in our services as our services are broadcast live over the Internet. Our morning worship service begins Sunday morning at 20 minutes before 11, and our evening worship service begins at 6. And now, this is Alvin A. Craig inviting you to be with us on our next broadcast. And until then, may the Lord's blessings abide. Once like a bird in-